Well, hello there, sweetheart. I hope you had a wonderful day. I thought tonight we would read a fun book called Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. This book is a silly book. It's a tiny book, if you can tell by Lonnie's hand. But it has lots of great words, and I hope you enjoy it. So let's get busy reading Harold and the Purple Crayon. Fun fact, I read this book to all three of Nani's kids when they were little. Look at all that artwork. Look at that sweet little Harold. All right. <clears throat> One evening, after thinking it over, for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed the moon to walk in the moonlight. Look at him drawing his own moon. He needed something to walk on. So he made a long, straight path so he wouldn't get lost. Harold is so smart. And he set up on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on this long, straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across the field, and the moon went with him. Look at that. The shortcut led him right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree. It turned out to be an apple tree. Look at Harold. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was terribly frightening, Dragon. Look at that. It's bigger than Harold. <gasps> it's so scary. It even frightened Harold, and he backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. <gasps> and suddenly, he realized what was happening. But by then, Harold was over his head in the ocean. He came up thinking fast. And in no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail. And the moon sailed along with him. Look, there's the moon, and there he is, sailing. After he sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. Look at his cute little anchor. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and he thought the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie. There were all kinds of nine pies that Harold actually liked best. Look at that, Harold. Oh, I bet those were so yummy. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. I would hope so. Nine pies is a lot to eat. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. Look at that sweet moose. He is so skinny. Skinny mini. And that little porcupine is adorable. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb so he could see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired, and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. Oh, no. Look, the mountain is taller than the moon. 
But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. <gasps> oh, and there wasn't anything on the side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. Man, Harold is smart. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. He made a basket under the big balloon, big enough to stand in. <laughs> he had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think of where his window ought to be. So he made some more windows and he made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a full city full of windows. Look at Harold, he is such a good artist. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think of where it might be. Look, he's thinking. So he decided to ask a policeman. Look at this policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyways, but Harold thanked him. And he walked along the moon, wishing he was in his room in his bed. But then suddenly, Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. Look, he's drawing a window around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. <laughs> Look at that. And the purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. How sweet is that? And with that, it is time for you to go to sleep and get sweet dreams and sleep tight. And remember that Nani loves you. Good night.